Understanding the kinds of data that were collected in the Allen Brain Atlas datasets will enable you to most effectively use the Allen Institute for Brain Science data discovery tools. In this video, I will be describing how the data in the mouse gene expression datasets were collected, as well as give you a brief intro into the informatics tools overlaid on these data. For the mouse adult gene expression dataset, available from mouse.brain-map.org, the model system used was a male C57 black 6 mouse at postnatal day 56. Each mouse used in this study was housed and treated identically to ensure a baseline gene expression pattern. The initial survey looked at approximately 20,000 genes in the sagittal plane, starting from just past the midline through most of the brain. For a non-random set of approximately 4,000 genes, Data were collected in the coronal plane, resulting in bilateral expression signal through almost the full extent of the brain. Each brain was sectioned at 25 microns, as laid out in this diagram, with the first section, second section, etc., which results in 200 micron spacing between each section within each experiment. Each brain was sectioned into eight experiments, which means eight separate assays were performed on each brain. Therefore, in the sagittal sections, each experiment contains approximately 20 images spanning about half of the brain. The brains used in the coronal experiments were sectioned in a similar fashion, resulting in 50 to 60 slides per experiment in this plane. There were eight experimental assays per brain, which includes probes for six genes and two reference datasets, which were nissel stained. Gene expression was detected using a colorimetric in situ hybridization, or ISH assay. In this assay, a tagged gene-specific probe was used to detect existing mRNA in each section. Antibody to the tag binds to any probe present in the cells and enables any detectable signal to be amplified. After a succession of amplification steps, the resulting sections were labeled with a purple precipitate primarily in the cells that contained the gene being probed for. Each slide was assembled into a cassette, which created a reservoir for facilitating the automated ISH process created at the Allen Institute. The hybridization process was completely automated, allowing for a high throughput procedure that expedited the assaying of approximately 20,000 genes within three years. Even the cover slipping was automated to ensure reproducibility. The result of this high throughput methodology is vast numbers of two-dimensional images that look like these select examples. Collecting these images in the precise and reproducible fashion is only half of what makes the tools in the Brain Atlas so remarkable. The Allen Institute created their first reference space from a single mouse brain, which was sectioned into about 525 micron sections. On every fourth section, anatomists drew structures on one hemisphere based on the cytoarchitecture. Those two-dimensional images were warped into a three-dimensional space, and in 2005, this static atlas was displayed alongside the gene expression images, allowing for the breakthroughs in neuroanatomy and gene expression to be married. In 2011, the reference atlas was digitally upgraded, more deeply annotated, and made symmetrical so as to better locate gene expression with structure. With the advent of more precisely located data from the neuronal projection and cell typing projects, the reference space was again upgraded. In 2015, the Allen Institute published a new reference space that was created from an average of almost 1,700 imaged brains. In 2017, anatomists completed drawing almost 700 structures in the three-dimensional planes of this reference brain. This digital reference brain is available for download from the Allen Institute API or the Allen Software Development Kit. Most of the adult mouse brain data, including gene expression, neuronal projections, and single cell morphology, has been registered into this reference space. The informatics overlaying the gene expression data allows for exploring the data in a way that doesn't require expertise in neuroanatomy or brain function. Several of the informatics modules are illustrated here. To enable the determination of possible positive signal in the gene expression data, an adaptive thresholding algorithm subtracts background signal and colorizes the positive gene expression signal. This visualization reveals high expression in the yellow and red colors, with the greens and blues representing lower gene expression. These false color images were registered into the three-dimensional brain space, which makes the expression and structures easier to comprehend. Further informatics, such as the unionizer and correlation modules, allow for a better understanding of gene expression within an experiment and over all the gene expression combined. 
Visualization tools were created from these informatics algorithms, such as a three-dimensional viewer, gene expression summaries, and the ability to sync gene expression to a location in the reference space. This also allows the user to search for enhanced gene expression within a structure or find other genes that show a similar expression pattern to a gene of interest. The data collected for the Developing Mouse Brain project was done with an identical methodology. However, the number of genes assayed was limited to approximately 2,000 genes that were selected for their known relevance at the time. The gene expression pattern for these genes was collected over seven developmental stages, four embryonic stages, and three postnatal stages. Reference atlases for each of these stages were drawn to differing levels of complexity by an Allen Institute collaborator, Professor Luis Pueyas from the University of Murcia in Spain. This is a list of the kinds of genes that were determined by a scientific advisory board to be relevant genes to assay at the time. If you are at all familiar with neuroanatomic nomenclatures, getting neuroanatomists to standardize their naming strategies is problematic, so you'll likely be familiar with the same area of the brain sometimes being called by more than one name. The brain structure nomenclature, or ontology problem, also exists within the mouse brain reference atlases of the Allen Institute. The adult mouse brain atlas uses terms that are structurally based, and the atlases created for the developing mouse brain were determined using gene expression during development. By registering the two ontologies into the same reference space, however, you do have the ability to translate between the different structure names. A structure in the adult mouse brain, for example, the lateral preoptic area, or LPO, can be overlaid on top of the developing mouse brain atlas, showing which developmental structures it aligns with. This brief review of the data in the mouse gene expression atlases should be sufficient to give you a jumpstart to exploring the data and tools at brain-map.org.